Hello students, today we are going to see Mahashweta Devi's biography. So, uh, Devi was an ardent fighter and her weapon were fiction and her political writings. She is well known for her prolific writings and her impressive body of work includes novel, short stories, children's stories, plays and activist prose that she published between 1981 to 1992. Mahashweta Devi is not only known for her political writing style, but her immense contribution towards communities of landless, landless laborers of Eastern India, where she worked for years, is marked. Her intimate connection with these communities allowed her to understand, begin documenting grassroots level issues thus making her a socio-political commentator of the marginalized community. So this led to her editing a Bengali quarterly, Bortika, which was a forum for the poor peasants, tribes, agricultural laborers, industrial laborers, and even the rickshaw pullers, who had no voice and no such space to represent themselves. Devi used the imagery uh, space, imagery space of fiction to begin a conversation about, about and a conversation with the very real people on the ground that had been neglected all this while. So, if we look at the life and work of Mahashweta Devi, uh, then we can say that uh, her writing life can be divided significant, significantly into uh, different phases or like major four phases. The graph or activities can be mapped beginning with her first book, Jhasir Rani, which means the Queen of Jhasi, which was written in 1956. It is a biography of the woman ruler in a princely state against the British in 1857. So we all are aware about the story of Jhasi ki Rani or Queen of Jhasi. So, despite lacking a research background, Devi did meticulous research in order to write this book. She was able to do so with the help of friends and well-wishers who generously supported her travel to the place to draw from archives as well as documenting oral tradition of lore and legends transmitting through generations all related to Jhansi, uh, Queen of Jhansi or Jhansi ki Rani. She wrote voraciously publishing 96 titles after this first book. Not, uh, this does not include her non-fiction and political writings, children books and the other editing work that she was involved in throughout her life. So this is majorly her work. If I say 96 titles, that they are majorly Mahashweta Devi's work. So in 1956, uh, if 1956 was the start of Devi's calling as a writer, she wrote in four phases for the reader to understand the corpus of the work that was written by her we can divide this like a uh, writing career of uh, devi into four phases which are uh, 56 to 65 she published uh, 19 titles during this phase uh, second phase is 1966 to 75 and in this phase she had written nine titles from uh, next phases 1976 to 85 and in this phase she, she had written 27 titles and her final phase was 1986 to 95 and enduring in this, in this phase, phase she had written 39 titles. The second phase here seems to be the leanest amongst her writing phases. However, it is during this very phase that she produced some of the sharpest and critical writings. So, the titles were Kavi, Bandia, Ghoti, Gayanir, Jeevan, Amrityu, uh, which was translated in English and it is uh, the life and death of poet Bandia, Ghoti, Gain. It This story depicts the struggle of a low caste boy in 15th century Bengal. So, it is during this phase that she wrote her uh, very well known and prolific work, which was later on adapted as a motion picture also which is Hajar Chorasil Ma, uh, Mother of 1084, a story about the radical left Naxalite movement that took place in 1970s. 
so if you talk about the third phase of mahashweta devi's career then it is a marker of a major change in terms of her creative writing as well as her political activities it is during this phase that she was awarded the state sponsored sahitya academy award for her work title aryanar adhikar which means the rights to forest and from then on her fiction subjects were the socially uh, for the uh, socially marginalized the poor and neglected tribes and their struggles so her intimate knowledge of what transpired on the ground allowed her to weave stories to bring struggles into the mainstreams now among indian language uh, her work has been translated into marathi hindi assamese telugu malayalam punjabi odia gujarati and ho ho is a tribal language now she has also been translated into english italian french and japanese so talking about the third phase of devi's work uh, it is considered to be more expensive so though she was traveling profusely to tribal regions of bihar and west bengal she felt the need to communicate to a wider audience to speak of what was happening to people in countryside in the name of development so she wrote a newspaper and journal during this period because fiction was no lo- no longer an adequate medium to convey the political and social struggles she was witnessing during her travels and her interaction with the people of marginalized communities so she had to come out of that fiction to communicate directly to the people and the best medium was through the newspapers and the journals which she wrote during this time so the various areas she wrote on included the identity of uh, identity of and dignity of the poor their struggles of survival ecology and environment now in uh, informal sector and minimum wages were like one of the main concern and literacy and education was other concern of mahashweta devi now if you talk about the fourth phase of mahashweta devi's work uh, it kept growing and she was rigorously involved in uh, activism and continuously writing for the causes she believed in she was preoccupied uh, preoccupied with the issues of mainstream development and the consequent marginalization of certain populations and the environment so while gentle bengali literature glossed over the problem of dalits and adivasis mahashweta devi used her position of privilege to actively amplify the voices and struggles so dear was uh, she that she was called ma by the tribes of uh, kheria and marang dai that is sister among the santhalas that means she was so much uh, closely involved in this work with the tribes uh, as a person we can say that uh, mahashweta devi started writing at the age of 13 but only got recognition after her first book was published by the time she was almost 30 years old so this is the milestone from where devi began her journey as a writer and activist not just chronicling a uh, social reality but consciously documenting exploitation as well because she was the voice of the tribal people or she had become the voice of the tribals now an important question one can uh, ask is that do the people she writes about in her stories read these stories because this is the biggest question because are they aware about the writings of mahashweta devi so to answer this question uh, then there lies a plethora of anecdotes where one can see instances of these people reading her work and getting inspired that means they were not just looking at her as a revolution uh, revolutionist or activist but they were also reading her so one such anecdote is of a riksha pula who asked devi the meaning of the bengali word jidipsha which means the will to live so that he had uh, obviously read in one of her books mahashweta devi was so intrigued by this riksha pula's enthusiasm towards reading then that she invited this riksha pula to work with her on vartika and her bengali uh, that was her bengali quarterly magazine so this 
rickshaw puller was none other than manoranjan vyapari he was a distressed man who was an ex naxalite who had taught himself to read while imprisoned in alipur jail and he eventually became one of the bengal's most famous dalit writers and went on to write more than 100 short stories and 9 novels about the lives of dalits in bengal now devi's writing are uh, partic- particularly devoid of sentimentality that means she does not tug at her readers emotion and is rather straight forward with her approach to talking about lived experiences of the marginalized that means she is not trying to play with the emotions of the readers her readers her language is very simple an ironic juxtaposition will be found and the ironic juxtaposition to the complexity of the issues she talks about and in fact it is precise because she is talking about complex realities that she uses in simple language to reach the reader so her fiction allows the reader to look at cultural practice social institutions identity formation sexual roles and how they operate in spaces with different power dynamics so this arrangement of uh, all uh, these in her narratives come together to display the exploitation of differences in caste class and gender so devi's work hints at a particular kind of change in the discourse of sexuality where it no longer oppresses the marginalized women but becomes a very ground of political liberation that means she talks about the liberation of the oppressed women the marginalized women so talking about her famous short story draupadi uh, which is about the rape and mutilation of a tribal woman called dopdi the protagonist threatens the masculinities of her oppressors by refusing to be ashamed of her mutilated body so it forces them to uh, like forcing them to survey her nakedness with a defiance and exhibits her power and autonomy that means instead of hiding herself after that rape and mutilation she opens herself and shows it to the masculinities or the oppressors who have done this to her so mahashweta devi was awarded padma shri though it was not for the work as a writer but as an activist working with the tribal groups of uh, purulia and midnapur district of west bengal so she was a, a like a pop, she was more popular even as an act- activist so uh, devi wrote profusely on the issues of mainstream uh, development and critic the trickle down theory her work is important to understand subaltern politics and their struggles to vi- visibilize their invisibilized exploitation that means through her work we can like see how the exploitation of this poor people or subaltern people were so she was associated with several organizations and founded several others she is as comfortable leading the processions of the people fighting for the rights of bonded labor laborers as she is behind her desk writing about this struggles that means she was as comfortable as activist as she was as a writer Mahashweta Devi the activist has been constantly involved in varied struggles and was part of several associations in spite of the demands of her increasing age so she played this varied roles throughout her life and the activist in her was alive and resisting till her last breath fine so these are some of the awards which were won by Mahashweta Devi you can just go through the details of it and these are some of the books and stories written by mahashweta devi